What's up, everybody? Tom Pelissero here with Judd Zolgad. The NFL draft, Judd, mercifully for you, after your very long day, it's yes. ended here. Started on no street farm and ends <laughs> at the NFL draft. How about that? What else would you do with your Saturday when it's 75 it was all degrees? Out in the western suburbs, so it's perfect. The biggest story of the day: Jeff Locke drafted the fifth round punter out of UCW, UCLA. Rather, boy, it's been a long weekend for me too. Chris Cooley also from UCLA. It's true, and and we knew as of a couple of days ago when I wrote the story at 1500ESPN.com, the Vikings had gone on a punter tour. I had heard Locke was the top guy mm -hmm. that they had liked. They had also gone down and seen uh, the Huber kid at Arizona State. They looked at Brad Wing down at LSU, but Locke left foot punter, which is something that Rick Spielman liked. I know Chris Cooley says he wants to compete. I know Rick Spielman's not ruling that out, but I would be surprised, Jed, if they take two punters to camp. Yeah, I'll be shocked. And, you know, keep in mind last year they drafted Blair Walsh in the sixth round, the kicker from Georgia. And we all said, why are you drafting a kicker when you have Ryan Longwell? Ryan Longwell, what, weeks later was released by the Vikings. Blair Walsh went uncontested into training camp. He was a sixth round pick. You don't take a punter, Tom, in the fifth round so that you can cut him because he doesn't win the job. The only question is, does Cluey make it to Mankato? I asked Spielman in the uh, press conference today how much of this has to do with Cluey's off the field, outspoken nature about things. Football people hate that. I mean, it's that simple. They hate guys that step out of no line. No matter what you're saying, the fact yes. that you're saying and something. And it doesn't even matter that it's marriage equality. It's the fact that he's talking about politics. Football people don't like it. Mike Prefer, the special teams coordinator, does not like it. Uh, Spielman downplayed it because that's all he can do. He has to downplay it. The reality is I will be surprised if we see Chris and Mankato. And I like Chris. I really do. I think mm -hmm. Chris is a, he's an incredibly cerebral guy. I know some people don't like him. I like him. I don't think you'll see him in Mankato. I talked to him, uh, I think, about 20 minutes after the pick was made this afternoon. And he's, he's very realistic about what this means for him. He says, you know, he knows, basically, and he would hope that the Vikings would know that this is the sort of thing that would motivate him and make him come in really good. But remember back to what they were saying uh, with Blair Walsh last year, but why can't you just bring in Longwell to compete? Because at that point, we didn't know what exactly to expect of Blair right. Walsh. We just saw a guy who had made like 59% of his right. field goals right. in, in his final season at right. Georgia. Why can't you bring someone in? And what they kept saying was, we want to get the operation. We want as many reps with these guys together. Well, now you've got a Pro Bowl kicker, Blair Walsh, coming off an unbelievable season. Yep. I think the last thing you'd want to do is have two different guys going in and holding for him and all that stuff, not to mention the fact that it would be a, a bit of a, an uncomfortable situation. This is something where yep. I would think maybe even before the workouts resume on Monday that maybe something happens with Chris Cluey. And Rick Spielman can say all he wants about uh, the off-the-field stuff not affecting Rick Spielman, but we know that Mike Prefer got tired of it. Prefer went to the Mike podium and yes. said these are getting, the distractions are getting old. The end for Prefer was when the um, that Hall of Fame, the two games where guys wore patches for the Hall of Fame, right. and Cluey has always said Ray Guy should be in the Hall of Fame, and he probably should be, and a lot of people agree on that, but he covered it up with a patch, and it distracted again from the team. And once again, football people don't like that. Prefer Prefer and Cluey don't see eye to eye politically anyway, and when you just keep adding up the distractions, I think Prefer finally said, you know what, enough is enough. And here's the other thing, right or wrong, Mike Prefer was correct on Blair Walsh. He's mm -hmm. absolutely 100% right. correct. So when he, so if he went to Rick Spielman and Frazier this offseason and said, boys, give me a chance to draft a punter, they're probably going to say yes. Because with Blair Walsh, he was coming off a bad season. Statistically, we all said, what are you doing? And he was proven correct. This is a kid in lock, not coming off a bad season. This is actually more of a sure thing to go this route. And here's the other thing to keep in mind about Chris Cluey, in fairness to the situation. Chris Cluey was picked up by the Vikings off waivers from the Seahawks in 2005. This has been a long run for Chris Cluey. Chris Cluey's been Seven on years punting in one place. Yeah, Chris Cluey's been on this roster for a very long time. So this isn't like Chris Cluey in a, a two or three years has flamed out here. Chris Cluey came here. He's done a very good job. Not going to be surprised if the Vikings move on. You look at the rest of the guys they drafted. They draft two linebackers out of Penn State. Uh, Gerald Hodges, who to me, looking at him on film, really the only guy I had a chance to watch a lot of today. Looks like, he looks like a Will linebacker. He's, he's a smallish guy, Tampa 2 type, where he's going to run around a lot. He's probably going to be better in coverage than he is at the point of attack. Michael Motti's interesting. Uh, linebacker, another linebacker from Penn State who primarily played outside there, mm -hmm. but has inside traits coming off a third torn ACL. And there's not a lot of guys in NFL history uh, who have come off of that, but the Vikings signed off on him medically, and in the seventh round, that's a risk you take. But all of a sudden, you're looking at a guy coming off his third ACL, along with Adi Cole, along with maybe Aaron Henderson, who I think is out of position at the mic. I have to look at this and think that maybe you got the possibility right now of them bringing in a veteran. I think that's exactly what they're going to do. Michael Motti's an interesting case. He's a real intense guy. He seems like your. He seems like Chris Spielman. As far as how he's wired, but like you said, Rick's going to keep taking those Big Ten linebackers until he, he gets one. He's going to get one right, and Nate Triplett was not the guy. But the key Peter was Ross Holman. The key with Mahdi is he tore, I believe, his right ACL in 2009. In 2011, he tore his left one, and then last season in November, as recently as last November, he retore that left ACL. Right. This will be Michael Mahdi is a higher draft pick without the torn ACLs. 
but he has the torn ACLs. And you can't expect a seventh round pick coming off ACL surgery to be your middle linebacker. I can almost guarantee you, and this is not going out on a limb, that the middle linebacker on opening day for the Vikings is not on the roster yet. And like I said, that's not, it's, that is by no means going out on a limb. I just don't see him, and I do not think Aaron Henderson is an option. I really don't. Jeff Baca, guard from UCLA. Travis Bond, guard from North Carolina. Travis Bond was the hit in the media room because he gave a pretty funny interview about getting hit by a truck, about how he used to weigh 375 pounds, so he gave up fried chicken and barbecue and pork chops, and basically listed off all the things that are fun to eat. Yeah. But it, I, I thought what Spielman said, though, was hilarious, too, that he was looking back because he was on campus for a game last season, and the only thing they had on the guy was 2011 tape. He looked at him and went, it. She didn't want it. The guy couldn't move. And then he was looking for him, looking for him coming out of the tunnel, and he couldn't find the guy because the, he'd lost 50 pounds, and all of a sudden he was moving pretty good. And I realize guards are becoming a little bit more popular as far as being early round picks, but this team has tried to cultivate guards through late round picks, and you can't blame them. So the two guards that they took today, I don't think you can by any means dismiss their chances to make this roster. And it, as you wrote throughout your previews um, at our website too, guards an area of need. They right. need to bring a guard. They need to create, if nothing else, create more competition at guards. So the two guards they took today. I think are both legitimate candidates to make this roster. Now, maybe maybe a guy like Bond being a late-round pick might be a practice squad guy, but I'm not going to be surprised if both those guys at least push to make the roster. And the seventh round, the other seventh-round pick, Everett Dawkins, defensive tackle from Florida State, in a defensive tackle group that I think coming into the week we said, yeah. boy, they're really hurting for depth. And now you've got competition at the three technique between Dawkins, Sharif Floyd, Kevin Williams, Christian Ballard should now be feeling really comfortable about his status on this football team going forward. Yeah, I'm curious how the Vikings feel about, given what they're doing, how they feel about Christian Ballard's development. My guess is it's not where they wanted it. He's a guy. And I, but I'm not surprised by that. When he was drafted, we thought that too. There were, there were concerns about how hard he would work. I'm not sure that he's a guy that's come in and worked as hard as they wanted. Dawkins, once again, could be a practice squad guy. He could, uh, he could buy to make the roster. But I do think this. I do think the Vikings come out of this draft other than middle linebacker. Given that I still think there's a plan here in place, I don't think this is all based on 2013. I think they actually, I think Spielman has held true to trying to build this roster. I do think the Vikings come out of this draft having done a pretty good job. It's impossible to put a grade to it right now, which is, I think is just stupid. But I do think when you look at what they've addressed, three first round picks, I do think that if you if you were concerned about where the roster was going, I think they helped themselves. Middle linebacker is still the really big question. They still got some guys coming in the undrafted group too. We won't have full confirmation on that probably until tomorrow. Iowa quarterback James Vandenberg though part of that group, including a linebacker too. By the way, a Spielman mentioned and he alluded to the fact it might be a, a middle linebacker. Now there's a rookie camp coming up this weekend too. And those free agent guys, yeah, they come and they go. Aren't you excited good. for that? The 50 guys? I am going to, I am going to Brainerd. You're gone? Judd and Dubay Friday in Brainerd, and then Saturday in Brainerd. Sorry, you're going to have to handle this one by yourself. <laughs> well, that's enough of this bad stuff. news. He's Judd. I'm Tom. Full really Vikings coverage. <laughs> I didn't know it. I've seen this live. 1500ESPN.com. <laughs> See ya.